All right, this is electrical two, module eight, conductor terminations and splices, uh, module number 26208-20. This is the 10th edition of the NEC. Go a little bit quick through this one, because I'm not teaching in front of anyone. So, page one. Stripping and training conductors. Um, if you don't know some of those trade terms, it's always good to look at. Um, you should know what connection means, what connectors are. If you don't know what a lug is, please look, please look that up. Splice, strand, terminal, termination, all these are, are things that you should know. Uh, make sure to read through those. But my first highlight is at the top right of page one. The basic requirements for a good electrical connection include the following. And then I highlighted the third bullet point. These characteristics should last as long as the conductor is in service. So if you guys are in a plant, our background's in a plant, if you're in a house, if you're in a plant, if you're in anywhere, do not put something in a box that you do not think is going to last. Um, if, you, if you've got too many wires in a wire nut, if you've got um, uneven length of stripped wire in a wire nut, all that stuff is going to cause failure. Please uh, do, your, do the guy behind you a favor and make sure that stuff works. Um, when I was in plants and stuff like that, uh, the biggest thing was going back behind and fixing people's uh, stuff that they should have fixed the first time. But the biggest thing, but that was a big thing. Like, um, definitely a cause for um, downtime on some of our lines and stuff like that. So make sure um, you are proud of your work, you're doing a good job, and that your termination is going to last for as long as that equipment is in service. Uh, next highlight. It's going to be after that green note, the third paragraph, first sentence is highlighted. Stripping is the removal of insulation from the end of a conductor or at the location of the splice. So you can do a window um, strip, which is just where you're creating a little window uh, inside these. I don't think they, they don't show a picture of one. Um, or most of the time you're just you're just cutting. Uh, the, the insulation, which is your, your thermoplastic insulation or whatever it's made out of, um, the rubber stuff off the end of the wire, uh, and then creating a termination point. Online test question, last paragraph on the page, first sentence. Online test question. Poorly stripped conductors can result in nicks, scrapes, or burnishes. Uh, so any kind of little nicks or scrapes or stuff like that, that's all going to have to do with, with making a good connection to whatever you're splicing to. So if it takes an extra 10 seconds to cut that, that bad, that bad um, strip job that you did um, on something, take the extra 10 seconds, restrip something, um, make it right, and you will, you will save yourself time in the long run. Flipping over to page two, my first uh, highlight on page two is the first full paragraph, first two sentences. Faulty stripping can pierce, scuff, or split the insulation. This can cause changes in dielectric strength and lower the conductor's resistance to moisture and abrasion. First two sentences. Make sure you're stripping stuff well. Next paragraph, first sentence is highlighted. It is a common misconception that a certain gauge of stranded conductor has the same diameter as a solid conductor. If you look at these wire strippers um, right here, you can see um, that this has a non-insulated side then usually it says insulated on the other side. Um, it might be on the back side of these, but um, these little holes are for different size wires and stuff like that. So one side is usually for non-insulated and the other side is usually for, um, that was a bad example, but the other side is usually for insulated and they will have different numbers because stranded wire is more, uh, is usually uh, wider than, um, or a little bit, bigger diameter than a solid core wire just because as small as it is uh, these stranded wires have, do have air gaps in between the strands of wires which creates a minimal amount of space which makes them a minimal amount larger than solid core wires. Uh, so you can see in that table one on page two like the first one size 18 wire um, a solid core uh, overall diameter in inches is 0.04 and then stranded is 0.046, so six thousandths um, of an inch larger 
is the, the strain. So just by a little bit, then you go down to the next one and it's seven thousandths. Um, and then the size 14 gauge, 9,000. So it, it changes as, as the different size wire goes up. So you just make sure when you're stripping wire, you're using the correct strippers um, where you can lead to the faults and stuff like that. You are going to have a question come out of that table one um, for one of your um, module reviews. Page three, these are um, points when stripping conductors. Um, that first bullet point on page three, first sentence is highlighted. Cut the insulation so that no frayed pieces or threads extend past the point of cutoff. So you just want to clean cut whenever you're stripping wires. Easy enough. One, two, zero, stripping large conductors. First sentence is highlighted. Larger conductors such as power cable can be cut using a ratchet type cutter. This is a ratchet type cutter on the board. Just so y'all know, um, just looking these up. Two seconds to look these up. Um, Electrical ratchet cutters. So just looking through these, if you can see these on the board, $200, $300, $250. These things are expensive. Um, so these are to cut large size wires, like these big uh, wires like this. If you don't have cable cutters, what I've also seen people use are hacksaws. I've seen that quite a bit with hacksaws. The other thing with this is with these expensive tools, like um, we had one of these when I worked in Nucor, and it was a shared tool in like the shared class or something like that. Shared means that not everybody's going to take care of it as well. This thing had nicks in it. Um, it also like like you also want like you get expensive tools. Make sure you're oiling these tools. Like this stuff gets rusty. Um, these are it's very nice to have these types of tools, but if they don't last very long, um, they're not like you're wasting um, a ton of money. And then obviously, like you can see on page five, they have like the, the power cutters and stuff like that. Um, that's going to be more if you're like a lineman or, or doing this type of work all the time. It wasn't something that I, that I did all the time. Usually we were um, either cutting stuff with a hacksaw or we had those cable cutters, but it was it was rare that we were doing stuff, um, at least in my experience, doing stuff that big. Same paragraph. Um, a little over halfway through, I got a sentence highlighted. Window cuts are often used on shielded cables to connect earth bonds. Um, they do figure seven. So they can show um, that, that figure seven is that heavy duty cable stripper. So you can use this, like you put your cable in, in the middle there, lock it down, and then that blade can cut a, a, a window out of the middle of your cable. And then you can pull that shield out of there and do earth bonds along that um, that cable. The warning on page four, last sentence of the warning is highlighted. A dull blade is dangerous because you are more likely to apply undue pressure causing the tool to slip. I've seen a lot of electricians use, um, my one of my shift partners at, at the steel mill would use, um, he had a pair of needle nose pliers that he used for strippers. Regular needle nose pliers, I think his dad gave him. Um, he liked using them. You have to have like a um, a feel for how to strip wires with needle nose pliers. Like that's usually like kind of the old school way of doing stuff. Um, and if you're not good at it, you're gonna leave those nicks and scrapes. But if that's your, I, I encourage y'all to, to try out different types of tools. I try, I still try different types of strippers. My favorite, like I've talked about these before, these the blue handle clines that have the stuff where I can cut screws, but also uh, make terminations with um, um, connectors like we're about to talk about. Those are my favorite, but I also just bought the new Milwaukee strippers just to try out, and I like them. I like them all right for quick stuff. They have a um, they have a spring that opens it up for me. So I encourage y'all try out if you're in the beginning of this trade. Try out different types of strippers, different brands, um, and find one that you like. We've got these. Uh, I've got a few different types in the lab. Uh, in all honesty, these that I showed you, like these are, I hate these strippers. Like the types like this, I can't stand these types of strippers. Some people might like them, uh, but I encourage you to try different ones, find one that you like. Um, they're talking about uh, proper stripping length with insulation inside of a terminal on page four or up here on the board. What I have highlighted, if you look up here on the board, is like your wire sticking out. 
highlight the one thirty second of an inch maximum. So this is not, so what I do, I don't pull out the tape measure or anything like that. And if I see anybody doing that, I'm gonna fail. Um, you're not measuring one thirty second of an inch. What I tell people is like, push the wire in there till you can see it and then clamp down just to where you can see it. So obviously if it's too short, you're stripping, you didn't strip enough insulation off, and you're gonna clamp down on this and it's gonna push that wire out this way. If it's too long, you're gonna clamp on on this and then you're not gonna be able to terminate this because you got your wire sticking out here. And it's never a good idea. And, and also you don't want um, your, I, whenever we do this lab and stuff like this, I don't want to, I will, I will not pass it if I see any kind of copper on this bell end of the um, um, terminal. So you want to have your, your insulation all the way butted up inside of there, and then just to where you can see the copper on the other side, and then you're clamping down directly in the middle of that. So make sure you have that one thirty seconds of an inch highlighted. Um, then they go through the steps of how to terminate wires. Page 6, 130, bending cable and training conductors. So training conductors is, is, uh, is going to be a big thing, but it's pretty much just bending stuff to make sure that that whole pin. Get ahead of myself. First sentence in 130 on page 6 is highlighted. Training is the positioning of cables so that it is not under tension. So that's making sure that you're not, like you can see the picture um, on the board and stuff like that. Like, like um, I would never want, well, training wire. So I would net, like looking at the picture on page seven in the top right, like I would never want my wires like pulled tight around the corner of that, that conduit. So I would bring them up and like bend them so that there's no, uh, there's no tension on, on the conduit or coming right inside the box, anything like that. Um, but training is just bending them so that, so that stuff doesn't have a lot of pressure, especially on like the lugs and stuff when they're tightening stuff down in different terminal blocks or um, and that, like up here on the board, like a um, overcurrent device or something like that. Um, you're going to have minimum bending radiuses, especially for the bigger types of wires. So you want to check that in, in your different guidebooks and stuff like that. I don't have I don't have anything highlighted, but it's usually in the manufacturer's literature for what bending radiuses and distances um, have to be. So you want to make sure you're marking that whenever you see it. Flipping over to page eight. I'm still talking about minimum bending radiuses. The last sentence in that first paragraph on page eight is highlighted. When using this table, the bending space at terminals must be measured in a straight line from the end of the lug to the wire connector in the direction the wire leads the terminal to the wall barrier or obstruction as shown in figure 13. You'll have some questions come out of table two for um, like how many wires you can put on each terminal. Um, so make sure to refer back to that. It's module review questions. Um, if I didn't say it before, the, the highlight that's in the first paragraph is an online test question. So that goes along with figure 13 that's on the board. So you're just gonna have minimum um, spaces. Like you have to make sure that the space um, between like coming in straight or coming in an angle is enough uh, for, for the size wire that you have. Um, minimum wire bending space table, that's on page nine. So you're gonna have a question come out of that. Um, so how many wires per terminal can you put on each one? Um, so one, two, or four or more, and then the sizes um, for that. I have a question to come out of your module view for that. 